Hello, welcome back to another Be Connected session. I'm with you as always. I'm Emily, your host. <laughs> Today we're going to be exploring Google Earth and beyond. So these include, well, we'll go right into it and I'll show you what we're talking about. So let's have a look. Look, there you go. Today we're going to start off with the Be Connected website. I do this every session um, because Be Connected is where I'm getting my information from. It's how I build these presentations and we'll show you why it's so good in a minute. Uh, first, we'll start off with, after that, we'll be exploring Google Earth, looking at how to use it. Um, today, I have a very handy iPad. It's lovely and big, so it's easy to see. Um, and I'll also bring it up on the computer because, as we'll learn, you can get it both as a tablet or iPhone or Android device app, as well as viewing it on a Chrome browser on your desktop PC or laptop. Uh, we'll jump into Google Voyager, a sub, uh, can not an extra feature within Google Earth, so it's not a separate app, but then we'll jump over to Google Arts and Culture, which is a separate app and is often looked over and not um, talked about as much as Google Earth. So I'd love to show you that. There's a lot to see here, so let's get started. First, Be Connected, where I get all my information from. Uh, Be Connected is a government uh, field initiative. <laughs> <laughs> to get every Australian online and feeling comfortable in the online world. Um, things, so I'll talk about what topics we have. Every topic I've covered so far has been on the website as a topic um, course. So I'll show you some of those. So heaps of topics to choose from, um, everything from beginner to advanced level courses. You can track the training to keep um, up to date with what you've done. And it, I think I adjusted it just one moment. And you can, yeah, it's great for everyone to use. I recommend it everywhere I can. Um, it's very nice to use. I like using it myself. So let's jump over there. Here we go, Be Connected. You can find Be Connected just by Googling Be Connected um, into Google, into Bing, whatever you've got. Uh, what else is there? DuckDuckGo. <laughs> I can think of other internet um, web searching sites. But from here, you can jump into Topic Library and today we're going to be doing Google Earth, which will come up somewhere in the middle range. So it starts off with the absolute basics. What is a computer? How do I use a touch screen? What is a mouse? Things like that. Moving into safe passwords, staying safe online, how to connect to others, how your internet gets to you with Wi-Fi and data. And today we're looking at online hobbies. So we're going to look at exploring Google Earth and beyond Google Earth. Ooh, very cool. So I'll jump back now to my presentation on the screen. I hope you look. <laughs> there we go. You think I get quick at it, but I'm always just a bit slow. All right, let's move on. <laughs> what is Google Earth? So for those who've not been uh, ingratiated into Google Earth's uh, application, uh, it's a virtual map that renders 3D imaging of satellite pictures onto a globe. Um, so it essentially lets you spin it as if it were a physical globe, the kind you get. You don't often get them anymore, actually. You might find it in an antique store at this point or a school. Um, yeah, it's much like just spinning a physical globe, but this globe you can zoom into, you can track where you've been, you can read road routes, you can do all kinds of stuff. And we'll talk about that in a moment as well. Um, they're up to about 98% of the world. Google's done a very good job of mapping it with um, cars, mostly satellite imaging to get most of the globe covered. Um, some bits have been blurred out or uh, they look kind of uh, transformed because they are hiding um, what is it? It's sort of covert material. So they've got things like military bases you can't see, um, yeah, certain government buildings you can't see the interior or the top of the roofs of those sort of things. So I think that's quite cool. Um, so then that the last 2% could be that, or it's most likely just that they haven't had time to map the rest of the globe. Uh, there's a lot of ocean out there that <laughs> they've got to render and make it look good. Um, and the way that you would view this is either on a tablet. So for me, I've got an iPad here today. You can use an Android device um, and any other touchscreen that you can get apps on, you can get it on there, but it looks even better or I'd say it's made to be used on an iPad for the most part, with a large screen preferably. Um, but you can also use it on a Chrome browser on your computer. 
what I mean by Chrome browser, for those who are unaware, um, different computer, you access the internet through a browser. So this could be Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, which is this one I've got over here, um, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Opera. There's a few other ones. Um, but Chrome is built by Google, it's a Google product. So Google goes, okay, if you want to use uh, Google Earth, you're going to have to use our browser. So that's what they've set it up with. So let's have a look at some basic features uh, and we'll go through these in turn. So I'll open both my app with Google Earth on it. And as you can see, we've got that lovely big globe. And for those who would like to look for it on the App Store, just jump onto the App Store with your app symbol. It could also be the Google Play Store, depending on what type of device you have. And from here, you'll go search and just type in Google Earth. And it has, as I showed before, this lovely blue Earth symbol so up here. There we go. <laughs> That's how you find it and download it. It's free to download. Uh, it does use internet access. It requires the internet to load um, images and maps and things, but it can save a portion of what you were looking at and have it work offline for a brief amount of time. Um, so everything I'm showing you today will require internet. So unfortunately, you can't turn these offline and you know, enjoy them on an airplane or something like that when you can't get access to your internet. Um, but it keeps it uh, up to date at least and it gives you the most current information if it is connected to the internet. So basic features, let's have a look. So first you can search for locations that you'd like to find. You don't have to spin the globe until you locate where it might be. You can type it right in, type your own address in, see what your house looked like on the day they took that satellite picture. Um, navigating the world, we'll look at how we swipe and pinch and pull or with a zoom scroll wheel, zoom in and out, or just using the magnify and minimize, <laughs> minimize, yeah the magnifier option and we'll jump into street view. So as you can see on the picture here on my PowerPoint slide, we've got a little image of a person. That is the symbol for street view. So we'll look into that in a tick as well. And we'll spin the globe to uh, find maybe a new location. There's a few options that make it quite fun. So let's jump back in once again. Thank you for waiting while I switch to different screens. There you go. So this is Google Earth on a Chrome browser. Chrome being, once again, the internet provider, sort of. Um, it's the platform by which you view the internet and look up searches. Um, I'm gonna also open it on the, the iPad. And when I get to very specific iPad functions, I will jump back here and change my screen so you can view it. First, <laughs> let's see how we navigate this world. For a computer, when you're viewing it at home, feel free to just click and drag. Easiest way to move around the globe. As if you were moving your finger, as if <laughs> you were doing this. Ding, like so. Then to zoom in, you have a choice of, on your iPad, you don't have a choice. You just have to pinch and pull. So pinching, like so. So to pull it closer to yourself, you make it bigger by expanding it. So expand. And you can always go in infinitely until you hit the ground all the way. And it will take a moment to load. I wonder where we are. Oh. We were in Russia. Very cool. Well, there's a lot of Russia, so <laughs> the likelihood of landing on Russia is quite high because <laughs> it's a big, big place. So if we were to pinch and pull like so, you get even closer. And again, dragging round. And the closer you get, the less it'll look like the globe is spinning and more that you're just moving a map side to side. Of course, that's because the Earth is round and when you get closer, it's, it feels less round. <laughs> Sounds incorrect, but here we are. We found Adelaide there, fabulous. So let's do the same thing on our computer. So clicking and pulling, moving it round. Do we go over to Australia? There we are. And I'll note here that the clouds that you view before they disappear, when you zoom in, because of course you wanna see the earth and not necessarily clouds in your way the whole time. Um, the clouds you see here 
are accurate to the last 24 hours, I've been told. Um, we've had a lot of wet weather and rain, so I'm not sure if that's true, but it is sunny outside now, so maybe that is the case. Um, either way, I think it's very cool, and I love seeing different cloud formations. But zooming in closer, I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse, but what you can also do is click the positive and minus symbols here, doop, 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 to edge forward by small increments. You can hold it down and zoom in, and you'll note that there's a little monochromatic globe here, which orientates you and lets you fly to a certain place by clicking on it and doing it. I clicked, I think I clicked on somewhere here up north. All right, we're in the Northern Territory now. Okay. <laughs> then I click back. Hopefully I'll hit uh, around South Australia. I might have overshot it there. Interesting. Where are you going? Okay, never mind. We'll zoom back in <laughs> of South Australia. As you zoom in, you'll note that we've got names of locations. Of course, we start off with the states and territories, but as you zoom in closer, you'll get cities, suburbs, towns, streets, eventually. I've got Glenelg here. Let's travel down. Where are we? Hello, Cove. So today I'm at the Cove Civic Centre. Hello, let's try and find it, shall we? So we're off of Lonsdale. Oop, that's, that's the train line. <laughs> now, at this point, if you're finding, okay, I want to find the building I'm in or um, this place I visited a long time ago when I was young, what you can do is hit the little search icon here, a little magnifying glass. And as you hover your mouse over it, it'll come up with the name search. Um, and then underneath is Voyager, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So search, clicking that open will allow you to start typing uh, any location, it can be the name of the building, it can be an address, suburb, yeah, so sort of uh, any way you would name the building. So let's do Coast Civic Centre. There we go. And now you can just hit enter at this point, but it will come up with a few selected locations. So I've got the Coast Civic Centre on Ragamuffins, that's us. So if I click that, it should take me, I was a little far off. <laughs> You can find Lonsdale Highway. Here we go. Crave Civic Centre on the corner. That's us. And on this side here, you can see a knowledge card is what they're called. Um, and normally they'd come up with the name and a bit of a Wikipedia article. We don't have a Wikipedia article for our building, so it doesn't come up right away. If I did something like the City of Marion, of course, that would come up with something. So let's do that. And I might add SA in. Oops. SA, just because there is a City of Marion elsewhere in America, that's us. So if I click on this, it should highlight or at least bring into view the district. All right, we've got <laughs> the suburb of Marion. It's not quite the same. Oh, it's covering the local government. But here, as you can see, our knowledge card has a bit more information involved. And from here, you can click on this and read all about it. If we had lots to read. There we go. It talks about Marion being the local government area. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's very um, brief, but it does cover what it is. So that's that. Let's go back to the Code Civic Center and we'll talk about navigating around the world. So it will show you your most recent searches as well. And that's one way to get to where you're wanting to go. So it starts off with this sort of, not panoramic view, but a um, sort of a spinning view to give you an idea of where you are in relation to everything else. So you know, adjacent to the road, things like that. But from here, if you click it, it'll stop moving, for one thing, because it makes me dizzy. <laughs> so it'd be nice to stop from spinning. And then we can zoom in. So same thing, clicking in, out, like so, it's not a brick score. There we go. Let's click on this again, bring up our title card. And I'll continue zooming in until Okay, it only brings up street view right away. Okay, let's say we want to go for a walk around this building. We want to see what it looks like on the outside so we know what to expect when we go visit. So what we'll do, we'll click on this little person. This is for street view. You can either drag and drop right away or you can just give them a click and it'll open up all the roads in blue that have been mapped by one of Google's cars. So Google has a series of uh, fleet cars that go around every other year, um, it, it doesn't need to be super recent. You'll note that this was taken in summer 
So of course it wasn't taken a few weeks ago where everything around this area will be green. Um, this was taken in summer, I can tell by all the, the brown fields. <laughs> Obviously too hot to be watered. And you zoom in here and you'll see all the blue lines. We can put a little person down on and we'll be able to uh, go through it as if we were driving a car with a big window on top. Um, these vehicles look like uh, the ones I've seen in person every now and then. They have a large globe on top of the car and inside is a 3D camera that gets a 3D view and can take a picture from all angles at once, meaning that when you're viewing the image, you can spin around on your screen to view the whole thing. And I'll show you what you mean, what I mean. <laughs> so I'll take my person, click and drag, and I'll drop it down onto this blue line. And we'll see if it likes to work, here we go. It zooms us in, goes, okay, this is where you've landed. Oh, we're in the building, cool, all right. <laughs> So because we're so high tech and up to date, um, we've had a Google crew come in and we've taken our own pictures. Let me just, I will, maybe I won't try and leave the building. <laughs> the way you can get out of Street View is just by clicking the little orange person again and they'll take you back to where you were. Let me land us somewhere a bit closer to the road just so we can get an external view of the building. Let's see what this does, here we go. It is summer, look at all our grasses. Oh, it's so fresh, so young. So this has obviously been taken, um, not just last year, it's been a while. There are several uh, features I can see already that we're missing, that we've had put in or was updated or trees have grown since. But it do doesn't mean that the road isn't that different. So it's still good to use while you're traveling. But I'm interested in getting into the building, so let's go sideways one more. And what we'll do, since I want to have a look in the building, and because our building does have these little blue spots that let us view the building inside, let's do it that way. So the way to get out of Street View, again, is to hit that little person, but there's a separate type of Street View. It's still called Street View, but what it does, here we go is reveal all the little places where someone's walked around in a building, not in a car, and they've taken a picture with this 3D camera. So here, if I click on this one, yeah, I'm on the footpath there, hopefully, and we'll see if we land somewhere we can walk. Here we go. Ah, it's early morning, beautiful. I can see that we haven't got our windshield yet, so this is maybe the previous year. Um, each, it should say a copyright notice on each image somewhere. But as you can see, I'm clicking and dragging to get a full view, looking around behind myself. You can see these trees have significantly grown from that first picture, obviously a few years before. If I click forward here, if it lets me, let's have a look. Here we go. Click, clicking on the arrows will let you know which way you can travel. When you run out of arrows, you've come to a dead end. You'll always be able to go back or click on um, exit street view to get back, but let's go inside, have a look. I can see the tripod of the camera that took the image. Here we go. It must, it feels like winter time. We tend to get this kind of uh, light in the morning during winter. So maybe it is winter in this picture. Let's go in. So not all, all buildings have this, even public places. Um, you do need to contact Google and set up the images that you're looking to do. But look how neat and tidy it looks. Oh my. Um, there's a significant difference to what we have now. Um, you can see a lot of chairs, extra barricades. We have a hand sanitizer right here. But it looks lovely. Um, the reason we did this is mostly so people who are looking to hire venues or just visit the library can get an idea of what they're going to be seeing when they come in. Um, I'm not the only one that likes to ring ahead and figure out where I'm going. If it's like a job interview or a meeting I'm having, I like to get the most out of it. Well, this is fun for me because this looks very different. There are several things that are here and aren't here anymore. It's incredibly tidy. <laughs> Overtook the pictures, took great pains to make it look good. Uh, this is our new book stand. So you can even see what was popular at the time. I think it's very cool. If you want to zoom in on something while in this view, you can either use your scroll wheel or again, that positive and minus symbol. So there is a point where it'll become too blurry to see, but I think for the most part, it's done quite well. I can definitely read some of these titles. 
very cool, very cool. That's how you navigate the world while in Street View. You'll note that as I turn some bits are foggy and then they patch up together. This is just because uh, it takes time to load these images and view them in a 3D perspective. So don't be, um, don't be worried if it doesn't load right away, just give it a moment and it should get through. This is fun for me because I'm in the building right now that we're exploring, so this is cool. <laughs> Excellent, so that is viewing Google Earth through Street View. Let's exit out here. Now you're not limited to just your own state, country. Um, as we are in real life with uh, current restrictions, we cannot go out, we cannot uh, necessarily do all that we'd like to do, but we can uh, couch surf and travel <laughs> virtually in this way. So say you're really excited to visit Madagascar one year, you can indeed zoom in and have a look. Um, they will have little points of interest, so each little one will be a city, a town, suburb, state, whatever they've got going on. And major cities have one of these larger dots and a bolder font, so easier to find. So that's just viewing that, let's move back out. I'll jump back to my presentation now and we'll have a look at Google Voyager. So it looks like this on the left hand side. We'll be looking at Google Arts and Culture in just a second. But Google Voyager is this one with the little, uh, let's say, <laughs> I think you just call it a ship wheel. I think that's what it is. I spent a few minutes trying to figure out what you call this. It's very specific. It is a ship wheel. It is, you know, used on boats. And I thought I had a special name, but ship wheel seems to be all you need uh, to explain what it is. So let's go back to our Google Earth and let's have a look over here. So this side panel gives us many other options and we'll run through them very quickly and we'll jump into Google Voyager for a little bit of extra fun. So we'll skip Voyager and we'll have a look at I'm Feeling Lucky. Um, this is just a bit of fun again. You click on it and it'll take you to a random location. We're going to the Silver Star roller coaster. Cool. <laughs> In Germany. Wow. That's cool. Awesome. So. First, it gives you a little title card. Uh, again, lets you know why it's special and why they're taking you here. But it is totally random. I've turned up in the middle of the desert, lots of places like this. Great fun. Ooh, this is cool. So if you were to zoom in here, you could get a closer view. Some objects are viewed in 3D. So I've got it in 2D currently. If I click here, now it's in 3D. But I imagine not everything gets mapped this way. So let's say, let's go somewhere uh, extremely popular. Let's go to Paris. Oops, pardon me. Let's go here. Ta -ta -ta. There we go. And we'll fly off. We're in Germany, so we're not too far. There we are. Et voila. So let's have a look. From here, you'll note that we have several different little indicators because, uh, of course, we've got. Paris being an incredibly famous tourist attraction. We've got several uh, sightseeing locations. I just want to see if we can find the Eiffel Tower. I think it's up here. No. <laughs> but because it's a major city, it has been mapped in 3D, meaning that as you zoom in, oh, I can see the Eiffel Tower now. There we go. As we zoom in, it'll look like a miniature model of a city with 3D uh, buildings, chimneys. They've done every chimney. Wow, that's a lot of work, well done. So as we drag forward, and you can travel in this sort of tilted view, or you can again travel from top down and appreciate the intricacies of the city. Wow, 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 never been, but looks very cool. <laughs> Let's zoom back in and here we go. There is the Eiffel Tower. It's a lot bigger than I thought. Wow. Gives you a great sense of scale having it in 3D. So from here, let's see it here. Let's do that this way. Let's click on it. I surprised it doesn't have more. Oh, here we go. So fly here, we'll move over a bit more. Take us there. Okay, we're here, we've arrived, excellent. I'm surprised we haven't got more written about it. Okay, yeah, it's a monument in Paris, cool. 
So from here, let's have a look at Street View and see what we can see. So uh, as expected, Paris is full of lovely blue lines, meaning that people have come, taken photos, let you walk through. Oh, you can even scan directly under. So a lot of these aren't just going to be um, official Google uh, people taking the photos. They will be people who are happy to have the rights of their image either sold or just gifted to Google in order to use them. So let's go, let's stand somewhere in the center here. Let's see where it pops us. Oh, Google Earth, how did we get over here? Oh, here we go. No, that's correct. I wonder why we flew away. Okay, there we go. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of tourists. Oh, we've got a person half cut off. Of course, when these images get merged together, some things uh, have to give. And if a person's walking in front of your camera, when your picture is trying to merge with a second picture, you're going to get your head cut off. <laughs> So here we go, you can get a sense of scale and size, especially with other ooh, ghostly people <laughs> standing around. You can just see the scale of it. Wow, so much bigger than I imagined. Very cool. So these are things you learn. Um, you can find the person who owns the image down on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, oftentimes it'll just say Google owns the picture, but here we've got someone called Rodolfo. Rodolfo, ooh, who gave the picture. There we go. Very cool. Alrighty, let's leave the photosphere because then I need these little pictures. I don't know why we ended up on that bank to send. <laughs> Interesting. <gasps> Brilliant. So that's, that was just looking at getting like, uh, feeling lucky. Otherwise, you can create a project. Um, this will help you uh, plan out a tour or a trip that you're going on. Um, it's good for those who already have a Google account. If you don't have one, you have to sign up for one. Google account just meaning if you've got a Gmail, you have a Google account. Um, and then you can share your project with other people, put pictures in, short videos, things like that. Um, so that can be quite fun. But I won't do that today because it's a bit more involved and not everyone's gonna use that feature if they don't wanna sign in. And now we'll have a look at map style. So this will adjust what you're seeing. So if you have a very clean map style, um, you don't have road names or building names. Exploration lets you have all these extra things. Everything includes um, train routes, buses, things like that. So very intricate. And then customize will let you turn on and off buildings and things like that and clouds. So these are the last 24 hours. Let's do that. Okay. Exploration. Very cool. Put that away. I want to see clouds. So let's zoom out. Ooh. Ooh, let's go to Australia and see what our clouds have been doing. Well, it was the correct cloud formation. Let's see. Ooh. Wow. Okay, so for those who love cloud formations, like myself, you can have a look there. Very cool. Now, the next thing we'll look at, I and mean, we can also measure distance between point A and point B. So if you're planning a flight or a road trip, you can measure the direct uh, as the crow flies or you can measure the distance by what your car would be traveling at. That's one way to do it. So let's click on Voyager and let's explore that. So Google Voyager is, it just adds to your experience of using Google Earth. Um, it'll find locations that it might think that you're interested in, keep you up to date with current events and bring up topics that maybe you would not find before. So it starts off with editor's, editor's picks. Um, for example, sur uh, super surf spots, very cool. Um, colorful communities, buildings like that. Uh, yeah, rock carvings, everything. So it's great fun to explore. You can even have a look at the underworld, so the ocean. So first it'll take you through, it's sort of like a little tour voyager. It'll take you to places on a sort of a curated um, travel schedule. So it's starting off with bringing us out going, look at 71% of the earth is covered by water. So if we click on our first point, ooh, we're in Byron Bay, very cool. <gasps> wow, look at all these fish. So from here, it'll give you a quick um, spin around before slowing, or you could just click out and just let yourself explore. And again, oh, hello, we're in a 3D underwater camera. Cool, whoa. Sorry, I find that very interesting. 
and you'll be able to get again that 3D view as if you were there in a bubble, sort of frozen in time. And you can see again at the bottom here, we've got these arrows and they're all very close together, not normally that close, but it'll take you to the next spot. Oh, we have rock caves. Wow, that is so cool. Hello. <laughs> and you can travel through that way, finding new and exciting places. So if you've got someone in your life that loves exploring the undersea, for example, this is a great one for them. And it is fully curated, so it'll take you to the next place. Very sad, talks about coral bleaching. It'll cover all types of things. So we're very much in Australia. We've got 30 to enjoy. And then talks about several other places. So very cool. I love that. So if we exit out that, we can go back in our top left-hand corner. And they'll take us out. So we're still on the tour here. So you like to leave it by going back. And then you can pick something else. We've even got quizzes for animal calls. We've got games. So let's have a look here. Yep, quizzes, lots of quizzes. There's a few for kids that they love. Um, there's one called, yep, where, in the, where on Google Earth is Carmen San Diego. Um, Carmen San Diego was a, still is, a popular kids game um, about globe trotting and essentially finding cities and learning uh, a thing about each of culture. Um, and so they've made it into a Google Earth game, a lot of fun. If you've got anyone in your life that would love that, show them that one, that's a good one. Uh, space exploration, they'll look at as well. Um, there are a few other apps out there that are better at space exploration and don't, uh, they don't have as much view on Google Earth that I've found at least. So we might just orientate them out with our little compass. But it still does a pretty good job. So we'll go back to Voyager, go all the way back up the top. You know, from culture, so cultural movements, things like that, uh, specific ways to travel, and exploring it as if you were a tourist. Uh, educational stuff too, so you'll learn about um, you know, architecture, uh, animals, all kinds of things. It's a lot of culture. It's a surprisingly good resource if you've got someone that you know is looking to research a certain topic. It is a great place to start, and they'll get a brilliant uh, idea of the, its relation and context to other parts of the world. Um, like before, I didn't realize the Eiffel Tower was that big. <laughs> and now I can see why it is so uh, iconic, because it is just so big and always in your mind. So let's have a look back on my other screen. Here we go. And we're going to look at Google Arts and Culture next. So we've had a look at Google Earth, Google Voyager, and I highly recommend having a play around with that. There's a lot you can do. And it really is, you learn by playing, essentially, playing through and figuring out how things work and that. So I've given you the basics to explore it, and now it's up to you to have a look and go a bit further with it. But let's explore Google Arts and Culture because it's a much overlooked app and program. So here we go. Um, a few highlights that I like to point out. Google Arts and Culture can curate several, or several different, I think it has about 800 museums, galleries, collections. Um, that it lists that you can view and explore the contents of. I think it's 800. It's quite a lot, actually. Um, but certainly all the major museums are listed there. You've got like the MoMA, you've got the Met, you've got everything. <laughs> Musée de Orsay, as you can see there. Um, but the main highlights that I want to point out first are listed here in bold. You've got art transfer. So all of these essentially... Uh, make art more accessible to people by making them fun. Um, I know art is fun for many people and learning about it for me has been extremely exciting and fun to do. But for those who kind of want an introduction to art, maybe they've uh, never been to a gallery before, here's a great place to start. So art transfer will transform a photo you take into the style of a classical art piece. So they've got Vincent van Gogh and many other types of artists on there. Um, Frida Kaho, Kaho, Sorry, I'm going to get all the names wrong, for sure. Um, and they'll transform it to look like that work. It's a lot of fun, um, and it gives you a bit of information about the art piece each time as well. So you're learning while you're playing. Um, art selfie, uh, we'll look at as well. You'll find, you take a photo of yourself, and it'll bring up images from classical art and art history that look just like your picture. Um, they're often highly realistic images already, so a lot of Renaissance um, uh, look at those paintings uh, will come up because they look very close to life. There are some abstract pieces that come up too, which are always quite surprising. Um, art projector, this is one way to view an art piece. So 
in the real world. So what we do, and I'll talk about it in a little bit more, you hold up your device. So all of these, um, most of these are available on a tablet device, but not necessarily your computer. So if you've got a phone, great place to start with this. Um, but with Art Projector, you'll hold up your device and face it toward a wall. And on that wall will appear through the screen, it'll appear um, as if you've got a painting on, in, on your wall in real life from a famous museum, it's a famous art piece. And you can step forward and step back and view it closer and further away, it's very cool. Um, pocket gallery, so this is a way to do another sort of, uh, form of virtual augmented reality. So augmented reality is where you've got the image of your actual world viewing through the lens of your camera or your, your tablet device. And then on it, they've imposed a digital thing. So here with um, augmented reality, you could put a pocket gallery. So it's a very small art gallery that you can view from the outside and then double tap to enter. And then you're within it. It's very cool. Uh, and then virtual reality tours, you can, this is one you can do on the computer as well. You can step through world-class museums, walk through it like in street view. So here's where Google Earth and Google Arts and Culture tie together. Um, Google Arts and Culture take a lot of what we have in street view in Google Earth and they put it into galleries and things like that and viewing famous monuments like you did with the Eiffel Tower. So let's have a look and explore that one here. So if you'll allow me to click on my next screen, one moment. <laughs> here we are, Google Arts and Culture. Here we can find this one just by Googling it into Google. <laughs> Google's become a verb. Um, you can search it in your Google search. Just type in Google Arts and Culture and you'll find it here. This is the current home page. Uh, depending on what time of you know, year, month, it'll change. Um, so currently people are very into Van Gogh. Van Gogh. I'm not going to get the pronunciation right. And you can view his work and up close as well. So for example, let's have a quick jump into one of the basics, um, basic views. So one of the recommended um, galleries they're going to show us. So let's go have a look at Vincent Van Gogh. So the way you view these is you're scrolling through. So there is a scroll bar on the side, or you can use your mouse and it will give him a life history. Talk about his work, progression, where he lived. So from here, you can even jump in and view. So this is where Street View jumps back in and you can go, ah, oh, this is where he lived. Incredible, amazing, wow. And you can keep going through here. These are still current images. So this is kind of getting the idea of where he lived, what kind of um, climate he was in, things like that. And then it gets into his work. Mostly his house though. There you go. Wow. Moth lamps. Very cool. Okay, doke. So we'll leave that be for now. But that's one way to view. That's one of the home. Just click on here. So viewing your options through the hamburger menu, which is sort of the name for these three lines, which drop open a larger menu. There is so much to explore. Let's go into, I mean, you can just scroll through and find something you like. Um, here we're talking about all the art using your phone or your iPad. So again, art transfer, turning your pictures into art, pocket gallery, exploring a gallery, uh, art selfie, turn yourself into an artwork. Um, so find images that look like you throughout the art world and art projector where you can throw up an image onto a wall and, or just as they've got it here into a garden and you can view it right away. Now this, this does more than just show art, it shows culture and movements and ideas. It's even got a few games in here. There's just so much. So you can even explore spectacular sporting sites like this one. So not necessarily typical art, but it is a sort of still an art form. We've got the Australian Surfing Museum. Let's go. I want to see what this is about. Celebrate the history of surfing. Wow. I wonder which state that's in. Very cool. Cool. I'm just going <laughs> to I won't just read. But you can indeed travel. Oh, you can visit the museum without actually being here. So cool. Oh, that's excellent. Awesome. All right, we'll go back one. Again, sorry to get sidetracked, there's just so much to see. Uh, let's talk about a few ways you can navigate the world. So from here, you can check out things like Explore. 
So this is just jumping into, okay, do you want to find pictures by the artist, the medium, the movement, things like that. Um, bring up history, you can do things in a timeline. And they bring up what's popular at the time that people are looking at. So we've got Napoleon Bonaparte is a popular topic right now. And it has like a thousand items in it, meaning paintings, artworks, uh, essays, things like that have been talked about. Got Rembrandt, so much, incredible. Uh, collections, so this goes beyond just typical artworks. We've got um, a collection of photos, so so much. Fashion, opera, the White House, wow. So if we were to jump into those, you'd see both the actual building they're housed in and the, the work within. Let's have a look at 360 degree videos. So these let you jump into the world um, or the museum or the location and you can get a full view. Let's have a look at Queen Victoria's Boulevard room. Let's have a look. <laughs> and these are in full video format. So they'll explore it as you go. But the coolest thing about 3D video, and I'll just mute him just in case you can hear him. I'm not sure if you can through Zoom. You can actually, while he's speaking and the video is playing, you can have a look around yourself. This is some of the coolest stuff out here at the moment. Oh, we've moved to a different scene. Where's our gentleman gone? Oh, there he is, he's coming over. <laughs> now, while you can't walk around during this, you can turn. So clicking the arrows and looking around. Because this was filmed with a 3D camera, you can view it from any angle you like. And if you were wearing a virtual reality headset, it would almost warp to get a full view and you'd feel as though you're fully um, encompassed in this location. Uh, but even just viewing it on a video is extremely cool. You get a feel for the building, the shape, the size, what you're seeing. Oh, we're moving around. Ooh, a banquet table, very excellent, cool. There really is so much to explore here and it can't really be done just by me showing you, but I will go through and show you quite a lot. But there's just, oh, there's so much to explore. So, ooh, inside a space shuttle in VR? What? That is so cool. Okay, sorry, I'm geeking out here. Excellent. Nearby, another top tab. So again, we're looking at the top section here. These are the main features, the main way to get around the website. So nearby, let's click on that. Yeah, you should know where I am. Um, it will take your location. So it's found us in sort of uh, the southern suburbs. Um, and it will bring up museums and discovery centers and things like that nearby. So let's go to the Bay Discovery Center. This should be over in, uh, yep, Glenelg. And it will let you know where it is. I don't know if it will always let you explore it, but it will tell you where your nearest gallery is. So that's the Discovery Center. A museum. South Australian Museum, let's go over here. There we go, up in the city, North Terrace. Where did you view it? Here we go. So some of them have um, listings within Google Arts and Culture, something smaller like a Maritime Museum maybe won't, but because it's our state museum, it will be. It'll be in here. So let's go explore. So it tells us about it. And then it looks at all the exhibits and stories that we've created for Google Arts and Culture. So all these are online exhibits that you can have a look at. Um, I'll do you all a favor and not click on the spider one. <laughs> Though I'm not, you know, I wouldn't mind it. Um, but I think we'll have a look at maybe color and flight. This seems like bird related and not scary at all. So yeah, they've created their own, very cool, their own um, sort of slideshow story looking at some of their major pieces that they have in the museum. And each is listed with um, the location of the piece. So we've got all these little, poor little taxidermy birds um, and they all list where they are in the museum. Very cool. So that's finding nearby and then favorites are places you've saved. So here I can put a little heart, ask me to sign in, but that's how you would favorite and then find your museum the next time you're looking to have a go. So we've had a look there. Let's have a look at a few of the features that you can do on your iPad or iPhone. Again, I say iPhone, it could be an Android phone, it could be a Samsung, Google, Google phone, whatever you have. So 
So I've got Google Arts and Culture here. Let me jump back to myself. Uh, let's stop that one. There we go. Hi, back again. So what we're looking at again is we're jumping onto the iPad. Ta-da. And I'm on Google Arts and Culture. It's the same screen today. So you can see we've got Van Gogh again. Whoop, and talking about art galleries you can explore from home. So let's start off. I'm keen to do art selfie and things like that. The way to do that on a device is at the bottom. You can see this rainbow button. It has a rainbow sort of Google colored button with a camera symbol. So let's click on that. And it gives you options. So not every device will have every option available. Some things require um, augmented reality and therefore um, certain gyroscopic technologies that will sense when you're turning your screen. So they won't always work for everything. Pocket Gallery, for example, doesn't work on my phone, but it does work on this. But something like Art Selfie is going to look, it's going to work each time. So what I'll do, I'll take a photo of myself, like so. There you go. It's awkward to take a picture while people are watching. Uh, <laughs> how are you today, by the way? I've not said hello properly. Um, but what I'll do, I'll have to reconnect. Again, it is an app that requires an internet connection. So I'm just making sure I'm connected. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Yep, I'm connected again. Very cool. All right, art selfie. One more time. So for me, it looks like this. Hello, that's me. <laughs> so, the goofy smile. Hello. He does a little loading screen and then if it's working, it'll bring up art pieces that look similar to my face. Um, it's a lot of fun and each will bring up a little percentage. So I'm about almost halfway similar to this piece, which I'm not offended by. That looks pretty lovely. <laughs> I've had, um, I have a few men pictures come up for me. Oh, here's one. So we've got another woman. Ah, uh, yes. I am a bearded man, looks just like me. Um, some can get eerily familiar, like extremely close. Um, for me, they bring up a lot of redheads. So they've got that right. <laughs> She's a very distinctive looking woman. I like her earrings. And with each, if you're interested, you can click on a picture of the artwork. It'll bring up a larger image and also a descriptor of the piece itself. So it's, you can, you can call it educational for sure. There we go, another redhead, I appreciate that. Yeah, it gets quite close. Um, no one, I mean, a few people have some doppelgangers out there that exist in art, but for me, I've not found a perfect fit just yet. But you know, I've got, oh, lovely gentleman there. Hello. <laughs> so that's really fun. That is Art Selfie. So again, you can find that by clicking on that little button down the bottom, or if you scroll down far enough, you'll find Art Selfie here. So for me, it's that button there. We'll press it again. Let's do Art Transfer. So if I click on that at the top, we'll take a photo. I'll take a picture again of me. Sorry, I haven't got much else around. Let me take it. We'll see if it doesn't stay blurry. Okay, it's blurry on my screen, but it looks okay from here. <laughs> like a mug shot. From at the bottom, it lets you choose a style. So you'll note that there are several uh, famous art pieces in here. Um, I can see another Van Gogh. We've got, what is it? Edward, is it Monk? Munch? I always get that wrong. The person does the screen painting. Uh, you can have your face. <laughs> that is very good. Um, it sort of overlays the idea of the image and follows con contours of your face in order to um, <laughs> to capture the idea, you can flick through different styles. So now we're doing another Van Gogh. Yeah, that's about right. This is very cool. Um, a watercolor. Let's have a look. And each of them come up with the name of the artist and a quick description. That's very cool. And yet, this doesn't have to be a selfie. It can be a picture of anything else around you. I just find it um, that would just have to be the closest thing nearby with my own face. Definitely extremely colorful. Wow, very abstract, I love it. Okay, how about still life? How do they make still life? Okay, yeah. <laughs> very 
very cool. Very, very, very cool. So that is art transfer. And you can save those to your camera roll, your photos, and you can share them with people. And each time you share, it'll come up with a quick description of the actual painting name and inspired by, of course, because this isn't the real painting. Um, and then it'll talk a bit about where it came from and who the artist is. So I think that's very cool. So that's art transfer. Let's go back, um, art projector. So this one will let us put a, here we go. It will let us project a painting in the world. Now I'm doing this because it's asking me, put, uh, put your camera at the floor and move it around. So it's just trying to get an idea of what flat planes you have in your room or in your building. We're gonna see if this works. Now it does have a hard time finding a floor or a pattern surface sometimes. So I'm just gonna keep wiggling. <laughs> okay. It likes that one. Okay, it's not going to work right away, which is fine. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, that one just brings up an image to you um, in person. You can move closer and further away to explore it. Let's do pocket gallery. Now, again, if this doesn't work right away, I have taken some pictures beforehand um, so we can look at those. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to work for me today. Okay, that's all right. I did it earlier today knowing that it may not work in person, not in the time I'd like it to. So I've got some pictures here of what it looked like to explore. So this was for uh, the bringing up an image in your world and I could approach it and get closer and view it closer up. And then this is what for me, uh, pocket gallery looks like. So here I've got a real world table and then a virtual gallery that I've placed on top of it. So this was done with the iPad by having wiggling it around and letting it find the surface. Um, I knew it wouldn't work necessarily right away. So I took some photos and what you can do as you approach it, you can actually see right away that it's a miniature gallery. We've got a very small photo and a small archway in order to enter the building. So what you do, I just gotten closer and walked up to it, but you would click at the bottom here, you click enter. And that would be how you get into the building. So this is again from the top view. They've got several little modules that you explore um, and walk through yourself. So here, I've turned the volume up here. Here you can see me actually in the building. Um, it's extremely small miniature. You move around by dragging your finger or actually walking around. It recognizes where you are in your own room when it's filming. And you can see that up here um, are the blinds that I've got in the room here. So it's actually within the box, but you can still sit up into your real world. It's very, very cool. Um, you can approach paintings, get closer, and each will bring up a little descriptor that you can read about. So it's as if you've got those little uh, description cards behind beside each painting, and you can explore it that way. So it looks extremely realistic. This was all whoops, rendered digitally. These are all digital pictures. And you can see again, that's the, um, the hole in the ceiling. You can see the actual image of the world I'm in on the outside of it. And then you can see <laughs> behind me here, this was me turning out the door and I could see him looking out here and those are more pictures of me. So that is the gallery, very cool. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work right away, but that's okay. Um, find art using, this is color palette, which we don't always look at just because it's kind of cute. Um, you can find art using the color palette of your photo. So here I'm going to take a very distinctively purpley blue and it's going to have a look for me. So it's picking out major colors. So you can see these little blobs. We've got purple, kind of a white gray. We've got more of the, the teal color. And from here, it'll bring up art pieces with the same colors. So this is fun if you're looking to do uh, interior decorating and getting some ideas. You can go, oh, I could find a globe with that kind of design. Oh, I could print off an image that looks similar to this. Um, some art prints you can buy, um, very famous ones like Van Gogh. Um, you can buy them yourself and have them printed at home um, or you can buy the prints. I just think that is so cool. Um, you can, if you're feeling uh, 
you know, interested, you can take a photo of yourself and see what colors come up. You can even adjust these. So say if I want, okay, well, I want more of that orangey color. And maybe I want more of my pink, my very pink cheeks. Maybe like a red, maybe a blue of the eye. Maybe, yeah, I'll just keep my top in there. So we've got several different colors going on. And you can see what other works contain those colors. This into involves pictures, um, photography of the actual, I love that one, of the object itself or the painting. And it is just a lot of fun. So these are some quirky kind of fun ones you can explore. There's so much more to check out here, everyone. I wish I could get through every single thing, um, but of course it's far too large for that. But please get on to Google Arts and Culture and have a play around. It is a lot of fun. So what I'll do, I'll end this with a few parting words by going back to my PowerPoint slide. Here we go. Let's finish up with any questions. I'll quickly pause the video and ask. So one moment. Excellent. All right, let's finish up today. I've tried to keep it as short as I can again, and yet here we are <laughs> an hour later. How to Kate stay connected with us. So for those of you who are still at home, you can jump online and talk to us that way. Um, we're accessible via face, our Facebook page and our Instagram page at City of Marion Libraries. Um, we've got a little chat box. You can ask questions if you need, or you can give us a call on 8375-6755. You are allowed to visit the library. Um, of course, the restrictions, if you're not comfortable, totally fine. Um, give us a call. Check out our What's On page on our City of Marion Council page. <laughs> Just find libraries, then what's on, and you'll be able to see any more um, Be Connected sessions we've got on, some uh, digital mentoring sessions for those of you who'd like some one-on-one -on -one help. We'll have a look at um, Bricks and Bytes, our Facebook show for younger kids, um, as well as our adult programs are all listed there as well. So I think that's all I have to share with you today. So thank you everyone that's tuned in. It's been lovely uh, chatting with you today, and I always have so much fun talking about Google Earth. Um, and Google Arts and Culture. So I hope you'll try them out and I'll see you next time.